اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام علی سیدنا و نبینا محمد و علی آلہ و صحبہ اجمعین ڈیئر برادرز اینڈ سسٹرز السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ و برکاتہ ناؤ یو یو مسٹ ہیو ہیڈ سرٹن ویڈیوز دیٹ ور فورڈ ٹو یو آن یور آن یور سوشل میڈیا سرٹن ویڈیوز یو پرابلی واچڈ آن دی انٹرنیٹ اینڈ سرٹن امیجز یو پرابلی کم اکراس ان دی نیوز چینلز اور تھرو دی نیوز چینلز to do with our brothers and sisters across the world whether it's going to be Palestine Palestine whether it's Syria uh, whether it's to do with Iraq whether it's to do with Kashmir or to do with an African country whatever it is in the world i just want to say to you that if you watch a number of videos even a few videos where there's blood being spilled where people are crying and people are having their homes demolished or people are running scared from bombs that are dropping or people are really you know miserable i have to say yes we care for them we love them our heart hurts when they are in pain yes yes to all of those things will we help them yes we will will we make dua for them yes we will do, does you know, are we part of the ummah where part of the body is is in pain and the rest of it feels pain yes to all of that however one thing is you will psychologically damage yourself or put yourself into great despair if you carry on watching too many of those videos because you feel helpless you feel that you you can't do anything about it you feel that you want to do something but you just you know it's not in your power you want to okay you want to go for demonstrations you want to go and sign petitions fine go ahead and do all of that but you know what if you carry on watching this and you carry on watching it overall it's going to have an effect on your mind on your life on the way you talk on the way you, in, in the way you behave with your own people around you it'll cause some form of depression or some form of stress in your life and your daily routine you feel that you're being you know you you you're weighed down you're weighed down now there was no reason for this there was no reason for you to go to that extent of having some you know sharing some pain with muslim brothers and sisters across the world yes we will give our donations we will give our sadaqahs we will give whatever we will do whatever is within our power to help them well what i've found is there are adults and there are youngsters um they they get affected in different ways okay adults who watch a number of these videos turn to start moaning a lot start to becoming start to snap you know uh, with with a short fuse inside them and the anger could 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 sort of go up these are adults and generally there's there, there's this kind of a depressive mood that comes across when you when you meet them youngsters because they've got hot blood inside them and they're more active they want to go and do something about it they become energetic and active and so on which is a good element in them however seeing all those videos and then becoming active could actually become the wrong type of you know chemicals being mixed in if you know what I'm trying to say and they will they will do something out there that will be detrimental to all of us or may you know may cause further harm to all of us now what's the solution to this first thing my brother my sister please remember that in rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's time when there were muslims out there getting tortured not every muslim stood there in the room you know the whole community of makkah never came together in one you know area and watched there silently watching someone getting tortured there that did not happen yes they got tortured in certain places in makkah but not every muslim heard those cries not every muslim saw what happened they only heard of it from a distant you know as a distant news that doesn't affect you so much you can carry on doing your duas you can you can you know say to allah allah saying this you know change the situation yes they did do that in makkah later on as the muslims expanded they did hear of far away stories of things happening but they were not there to see it they were not there to hear it because it really has an effect when you see the image when you hear the cries and you visualize what actually happened it's almost like you lived there for that moment and it will have a massive impact on the way your own 
psyche works, your own mind works, it will start to cause a depressive mood. Now the short answer to you is, if you're asking, well, what do we do? Okay, make your du'as, make them daily, make long du'as. Give your sadaqahs, do what you can, do your demonstration, your petitions, try and, you know, get people to, to, you know, people who are leaders to try and change the situation, yes. But overall, you need to understand, you have a life too. And you've got a family around you. And you've got a world around you. And your world has also got its own problems. And you've got to still deal with these problems. And don't forget that. And don't, don't make yourself feel so depressed. I mean, finally, I'll leave you with one thing. Do you know that even in the midst of the battle of Badr, just before they started, Rasulullah had a moment to share with his, with his Sahaba. I mean, front rank. This is, this is an epic moment. You've got, you've got the lines that, are, that Rasulullah made on one side. You've got the enemies, a thousand of them waiting to have this, this battle that might just wipe away the Muslims. And the Prophet ﷺ is walking up the, the front row, trying to get them in line. So with the, with the handle of his sword, he just gently pushes one Sahabi from the stomach in his, in his place. And the Sahabi says, Messenger of Allah, and the Prophet says, what? He says, you hurt me. What? You hurt me? So, subhanallah al azim what is the Prophet supposed to do? He said, okay, I'm Sahaba, shocked. Well, what is the Sahabi saying? So the Prophet gave him the, the sword and said, okay, take the handle and hit me the same way as, as, as I did. And, and what did the Sahabi do? He came down, he took that, you know, the handle of that sword, and the Prophet wasallam exposed his, you know, his, his stomach, and this individual kissed the stomach of the Prophet because he may never live to see the Prophet ﷺ again. And he said, I didn't want to hurt you. I wanted a, an opportunity to do something that I may never be able to do again. Now, this is just at the beginning of a battle. They still keep their minds focused on things about love, things about real people. You know, they, they might die. They might die in the next few months. But love, about the people who you care for, these are sometimes more important to keep your head balanced on your shoulders so you can have a good day. You need to do that as well. And that's my point. Jazakum khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.